So getting into chapter seven, we're gonna be looking at probability. And this is gonna be some, uh, what I consider some basic probability. We'll also do some counting, and we'll look at the binomial distribution. So 7.1 is looking at probability. How do you find the probability of an event? You're gonna be hopefully already done a lot of simple events in other math courses. We're gonna be looking at some complex events in this section. Now just different types of probability that we're gonna be looking at, talking about throughout this chapter. One's theoretical probability. In my, this is something where you already know information about the event that's happening. Take a deck of cards. Hey, if I say, what's the chance of pulling a king? You know there's four kings in a deck. You know there's 52 cards in a deck. You know that information. Hey, so rolling a die, a deck of cards, that would be considered theoretical probability if I'm just asking you, what's the chance of you pulling this card, rolling this on the die? Experimental probability. This is where you need to run the experiment. You need to go move forward and collect the data to figure out the probability. Every trial that you run, that's considered part of your total. And you're gonna count successes, failures, depending on what your event is, okay? What's the chance someone trips over a rope? Well, if I put a rope across the hallway, I don't know exactly what, when people are gonna fall, how many people are going to fall. I'd have to sit there and watch, okay, people are walking by. Each person that walks by is considered a trial, and I'd count. This person fell, this person did it, this person did it. And I'm collecting that data, okay? So that's theoretical, experimental, and the last one is geometrical probability. Geometrical probability is using area, volume, a lot of the geometrical formulas uh, that you learn, and we're gonna use that. It's still topic over total, okay? So it's still gonna be, here's our total area, and we're gonna say the topic's gonna be the chance of just part of this. Probably a problem that you've seen is the dartboard problem. What's the chance that you hit the bullseye? What's the chance that you hit the third ring? Okay? Those are the three types of probabilities. Okay? Now, the complex events, this is where we're gonna take two or more simple events and put them together. Now, the way we're gonna put them together is using either the addition or multiplication rule. Okay, so the first one we're gonna look at, the addition rule. And the key thing here is the word or, okay? The addition rule is when there's only one action happening, but multiple outcomes can count as an excess. It's an or, either or could happen, and us count it as a success. So we have the keyword or to look for in the problem. There's only one action, and you're going to have to think, are the events mutually exclusive or not? Okay, so we'll talk more about mutually exclusive in a second, but this is what we're gonna have to think about once we start calculating our probability. For multiplication, there's a couple keywords. We have then, and, and the phrase in a row. And all these mean there's more than one action happening. I'm pulling one card from a deck, then I'm pulling another card. Two actions, pulling two cards, okay? If I am picking three red cards in a row, okay? Three actions are happening for that activity, for that event, situation. So that would be the multiplication rule, okay? There's more than one action happening, okay? So, and you have to think, are the events independent or dependent? And really what we're thinking about is independent means our probabilities aren't going to change from one action to the next. Dependent means the outcome of the first is going to affect the outcome of the second. This would be conditional probability. Now we're not gonna get too detailed with that. You can do that in your upper, upper level uh, probability courses, but we're just gonna be looking at a couple basic multiplication problems. So here for the addition rule first. Mutually exclusive events, events that cannot happen together. So this is what you have to think about. Okay, I see the keyword or, I know, okay, here's my two events. Can those two events happen at the same time? Okay. Now, if they're mutually exclusive, it means they can't. And all we need to worry about is taking the probability of event A probability of event B, and this is a notation for probability, it's what the P stands for, event A and event B, and you're adding those probabilities together. Here's an example. What's the chance of pulling a five or a king from a standard deck of cards? Okay, well, right here's our keyword. Okay, and that's a good thing to start off doing. When we start off these problems, let's circle the keyword. So now we see the word or, we know it's the addition rule. We have our two events. A 
and B. And if you know a deck of cards, there's no card in a deck that is a king and a five at the same time. So these are considered mutually exclusive events. So setting up these problems, there are four fives in a deck and there's 52 total. The keyword or means we're adding these together. The kings, there are four kings and we're adding those together. Again, there's on B52. Usually for the or statements, since we're looking at the same situation, a lot of times it's going to have the same denominator for our course that we're looking at. Now I'm going to ask you guys to calculate these probabilities and your answers be in percentage form and round to three decimal places. So if you're doing this work here, 4 or 52 plus 4 or 52, I have 15.385% Okay, so I have it turned into a percentage and I rounded it to three decimal places. Okay, so there's an example of the addition rule when they are mutually exclusive. And they're not mutually exclusive, not another term, we're just saying they're not mutually exclusive. It means that events can happen together. Now this time, we're still adding the two probabilities together, but we have to worry about overlap because the events can happen together. That means that their count is falling in both the probability of event A and the probability of event B. It's a chance that we over count how many times the situation, how many outcomes the situation can happen and consider it a success. Subtracting how many times they can happen at the same time will take those away so that we won't be over counting anything. So let's look at this. What's the chance of picking a heart? or an ace from a standard deck of cards. So again, keyword is or. We have heart is our A, ace is our event B. Okay, so I'm gonna start this off the same way. Okay, same thing as we did up here for hearts. There are 13 hearts, and we're still looking at 52 cards. We have the keyword or, so we're adding, we have aces, four aces, and there's 52. And now I have to think, can I get an ace that is also a heart? And the answer is yes, there's one ace that's also a heart, and that's the subtracting of ace of uh, probability A and B happening together. So I'm gonna subtract one over 52. Okay, and looking at this, I have 30, 0.769. Okay, so for the additional, that's what you need to think about. You need to think, okay, how many times does it happen? Can the events happen together? Start off the same way, event A and event B, but then for this one, we just saw that ace and hearts can happen at the same time. Okay, so there's two examples of the additional. Let's look at another set of examples. Okay, so here we're looking at favorite pizza, and we have a type of crust, deep dish, thin crust, mushrooms, pepperoni, and plain going across the top. And this is where I always tell my students we're going to simplify this, okay? Let's not pretend you can get half mushroom, half pepperoni. Let's pretend you can only pick one topping, okay? So you can't get mushroom and pepper at the same time. We're simplifying this. We're just using this as an example in case this situation comes up, okay? So here's our table. Now the first thing we talk about in probability, topic over total. So you should find some totals. Go down each one of your rows, columns, go across your rows, and you also need your grand total for the total at the bottom. Okay? So looking at this, I added everything up for you, and there's our totals. Okay? So the grand total is probably the most important, 335. Okay? Now the important thing is make sure you're only adding the inside numbers. You don't want to go across the bottom of your totals and down the side. That will double your uh, grand total and mess up what your final answers would be. Okay, what's the chance of picking a deep dish or a plane? So, looking at this problem, I see a keyword or. Deep dish is on be my event A. Plane is my event B. Okay. And now we need the totals of those. Okay, deep dish is going across the top there, that top row, 
There's 169 deep dish people said deep dish is their favorite. So we're looking at 169 over 335. For plain, we're going down that last column. So we're going down here and there's 83. So now I ask yourself, can you get a deep dish pizza that's also plain? Okay, that can happen if you look at the directions going across the top row, going down that first column, right there is how many times they can happen together. That's the overlap of the deep dish and the plane. Okay, so that's what we need to subtract. Subtract 48 over 335. So that's one way if you get a table problem like this, one way you can look at it. If the topics are going in opposite directions, going across and then up and down, there's going to be an intersection, and that's what you need to subtract. So if you plug that in, I have 60.89. 60 okay, so that was a non-mutually exclusive example there, because the deep dish and the plane can happen together. Here we're looking at what's the chance of picking mushroom or plane. Okay, I'm going to get rid of... This up here, so we don't get confused, okay? But I'm gonna start this off the same way. I'm not going to circle my keyword or. We have mushrooms being event A, plane being event B. So let's start this off. Mushrooms going up and down, right here, 102 is the total. Okay, keyword or, so I'm adding, plane, we did that up top, it's going over here is 83. Okay. Now if you look at the chart and think about those two events, mushrooms going up and down, plane is going up and down, both are going vertically in their columns, there's no point of intersection. There's no point of intersection, you can't take anything away, they can't happen together. So there's our problem, you can plug that in, and I have 55.224%. Okay, sorry, I got to the bottom of the board there, got a little sloppy, okay? So take a look at those four examples again, okay? And again, or is the key word and think, can, you, can the two events happen at the same time? So you need to think, are they mutually exclusive or not? Okay, so that's the addition rule. The second half of this section is I'll look at the multiplication rule.